So we are working now on a custom board, uh, an unknown one, a customer board, based on the same chips, which is the STM32 H7B3IL. So let's go, let's close this one, and let's go to the QBMX. So here we will go and select our MCU. which will be H7B, so this one. And so the first, uh, the first screen shows a completely unconfigured uh, MCU, of course. So we need first uh, to enable the TouchJFX uh, plugin because as you, can see, as you can see here, there is no more graphic, uh, graphic IP here. Previously, there was a graphics uh, section when we can enable TouchFX or STMWIN. This one has been removed and now we have TouchFX coming as an additional software, so an external plugin. So the first thing you have to do is to go in the, into the software package manager and download the TouchFX generator package. So once this is uh, downloaded, so this is green, you will be able to go to additional software and here enable the generator. And once this generator is enabled, you have a new section appearing here, which corresponds to the TouchFX, uh, the TouchFX generator. So I enable the graphic application. And now I have a list of the parameters that are directly linked to uh, the TouchFX library. These are mandatory that are required by the library to be initialized properly. So I will uh, I, I need to enable first all the peripherals that are needed. So I will go first to the CRC. So I will mute and, uh, and do it quickly. So now the, <coughs> the mandatory peripheral I are enabled. I can start configuring uh, my TouchFX framework. Uh, as you can see, there are a list of dependencies. These dependencies must, be, must disappear in order to generate the code properly. These are kind of constraints that, uh, that needs to be, to be fixed. So first, the pixel format is not the right one. The number of layers is, uh, is wrong and because I didn't set anything and the alpha constant should be, uh, should be 255. So regarding the display first, I will select the LTDC, disp the LTDC interface because I will use the LTDC to control the screen. In, the, in the, this use case, I will select also RGB 888. The width will be the same as on the discovery board, to be simple. Here I can select uh, the single or double buffering, or even partial buffer. So I will I will set single buffer. Anyway, just to be clear, we will not generate, uh, we will not flash the generated code on the board uh, because it will uh, require to to add some uh, some board specific uh, initialization. I will show you. Uh, that's what the Cubemix does not do. In fact, the Touch FE designer with the application template does this for you. But when you are using the Cubemix, there is a part which is specific to your board that needs to be implemented by yourself. So the TDC tick source will be uh, used, the chromat also, and the, the free artos. Now I have to fix uh, the LTDC. So now, hopefully, all the dependencies are removed, so I can now generate the code. So I go into Project Manager. I will generate in a webinar also. My board, my project is called S7B use case B. I will use uh, advanced structure and SM32 cube ID. 
and I can generate the code in fast forward mode again. Now the generation is done. Uh, so we'll open the folder. So here is the folder that has been created. So when what the, the most simple way is to directly open the cube ID and import the project. So it's an existing project. Use case B and finish. So we can see uh, our IOC CubeMX file. We can see also some TumJFX uh, initialization. But what we cannot see compared to uh, the other use case A is that we have no a graphical user interface files. This contains the graphical user interface uh, definition. And also this gener the, there is a generated part that is uh, read-only, and there is this part that the user can modify. So this contains all the buttons, the image, and the background image we defined. This is for the moment not present, but we have here a, a, a dot part file that, we, that can be opened in the TouchFX designer, and this will uh, allow us to create the user interface. So what we basically defined using the CubeMX and the TouchFX plugin is an application template, part, or at least part of it. So when I double click on this dot part file, the TouchFX designer opens and you will see that I cannot select, I do not select the application template because it's, it's already set in some way. I only have to select a, a user interface. So I will select again a blank UI. And here I can create, so I will get very, go very quickly, uh, add a box, add a button, mm. and generate the code. So when I generate the code, I will create uh, the, the generated and uh, GUI folder that uh, we saw on the use case A. Uh, just note that on in this case, since we selected the cube ID, uh, ID there is no run target uh, button available. The reason is that for the run target to, to, be, uh, to be enabled, you need the GCC toolchain behind. And uh, this is available only when, uh, when you start from an application template. But the run simulator button is still available and working, of course. So the code is now generated. I can go back to CubeID and refresh my project. And now I can see that I have, as in the use case A, uh, the setup of the, the basic screens and the user part that can be modified with the, the screen one and the command file to, uh, to my uh, user interface. And the last point is that in the drivers folder, you can see that there is no BSP folder. So that means that this is an empty, uh, th th it's, it's a skeleton as far as the, uh, the board specific uh, peripheral as con are concerned. So if, y if I launch uh, a build process, it will build, it will generate a, a file, but it will not be functional on your board uh, yet. You still need to provide all the low level drivers and the specific initialization of your screen, for example, a specific pins, the backlight needs to be to be uh, enabled at a specific time. This cannot be guessed, in fact, by the CubeMX and is not uh, supporting uh, the BSP for all the available displays and all the available uh, uh, external memories. So this is uh, up to your user to implement it. 
so that's it for the the second uh, the second use case and that's it for the this entire lab uh, i hope it was uh, clear and uh, so I invite you to test it uh, directly using the designer and the simulator and uh, enjoy uh, developing uh, uh, using uh, the TouchFX uh, solution. Bye-bye.